Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Paul Kozik, and I'm a product line manager at Point Grey, Clear Point Grey, I should say, as many of you probably know. And I'm here to talk to you about the Ethernet evolution and whether we're ready for 10 gigabit Ethernet in machine vision. So let's get started. So before we get uh, we get going, uh, we should introduce the the background of Ethernet and, and where it all got started. Back in 1999 uh, was when the IEEE introduced uh, Gigabit Ethernet, uh, the standard itself, and then it took about seven years for the first Gigabit Ethernet Gigivision cameras to come out. It's been an exciting path, I would say, for the last 10 years, seeing Gigabit Ethernet evolve and become uh, a really a predominant interface in our industry. So by 2007, the AIA market study was reporting a 4.6 market share for Gigabit Ethernet. And uh, with the 2016 market study, the AIA reported a 54% market share, which is substantial uh, when we look at the short period of time that it took for Ethernet to become so dominant. So here's a, a, a comparison of all, of all the popular interfaces that the AIA looked at. Uh, this is the 2016 market study, and we can see the growth of uh, the growth of Ethernet and the decline of other interfaces such as FireWire and analog. So, in order to answer that question, if we're ready for 10 gigabit Ethernet, I thought we'd break it down into three key questions, and, and those are: What problems does 10, gig, 10 gigabit Ethernet solve for us? What value does it offer compared to existing interfaces and technologies? And finally, is it readily available to us? Is it something that we can access and purchase throughout the world? And uh, is it also affordable as part of that? So when we think about the market problem for 10 gig Ethernet, uh, it's important to, to recognize the ongoing trend of increased resolutions and the AIA is has shown us that the 4 to 8 megapixel is, a, is one of the fastest growing uh, resolution segments with 17.1%. As I've shown you in the previous slide, the, the wide adoption of Ethernet uh, means that there is a, a, there's a lot of installations out there that rely on, on Gigivision cameras and that also rely on uh, Cat5A cabling. And so when you combine that uh, adoption and acceptance of Ethernet along with the ongoing demand for increased resolution and frame rate, many, uh, many companies have emerged with link aggregation cameras. And so that's what we see here at the bottom. These are two Ethernet ports that both combine to double our gigabit Ethernet bandwidth. At the time, this was really the only possible option. To, to increase your bandwidth and still rely on Ethernet. However, it came along with some challenges, uh, including having to use specific controllers that support teaming, having to route multiple cables, and all that stuff uh, led to some challenges when it come to, came to integrating these cameras. So before we get into the value aspect of 10 gigabit Ethernet, let's just qualify a little bit what, uh, what I'll be talking about. There are two uh, predominant physical layer types for 10 gigabit Ethernet, and that is 10G base T, and what could be referred to as direct attached. And I, we will be talking about the 10G base T option, which uses copper, RJ45, CAT5E or CAT6A uh, connections, um, as opposed to the SFD connector which you can see here on the right-hand side. The 10 gbst option is backward compatible with slower links. It also has um, support for up to 100 meters as opposed to direct attach, which is limited to about 10 meters with the copper option. Although you can increase that substantially by going to fiber, but that of course comes at, at an increased cost. 10 gbst can also be field terminated that means that customers can build their own cabling specific to the length that they're looking for, which is not, uh, not really an option for direct attach. Okay, so now let's look at the value comparison. 
And so when we talk about interfaces, uh, machine vision interfaces, bandwidth and cable length are, are really the performance metrics. So this is a little graph that we've built comparing uh, 10 GBase-T to uh, some of the other commonly available interfaces of today. And although 10 GBase-T may not be the highest bandwidth option out there, the existence of these other interfaces essentially means that there is a market out there for 10 GBase-T. There are customers that need these data rates. Compared to these other, uh, these other technologies, 10 GBase-T is obviously the market leader in terms of cable length. And that's where the success of Gigabit Ethernet has come from. And, and um, 10 GBase-T promises to leverage, leverage that as well. So I talked a little bit about backward compatibility with 10 GBase-T, the fact that we can use it on slower links. Um, that also means that we can, uh, we can plug a 10 GBase-T camera into your laptop or any other gigabit type controller that you might, you might be using which is nice if you want to develop uh, in a remote location or if you want to connect the camera locally to maybe focus the optics. One of the other key benefits is being able to take advantage of Geeky Vision. And so we can use Geeky Vision um, with 10 Gigabit Ethernet without any changes to the standard itself. And this is really powerful for us uh, by being able to integrate uh, a 10 G based T camera directly with third party Geeky Vision libraries such as such as Matrox Mill. So, looking at accessibility, um, cabling is is a key is a key advantage for 10G based T because we're using copper, we're using Cat5 A and Cat6, uh, Cat5 E and Cat6 A, I should say. And um, although you will probably uh, you will, you probably have read that 10G based T requires Cat6 A, we believe that with lengths shorter than 40 meters. CAT5E can actually be employed. And this is a, 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 a especially important for those, uh, those applications that already have uh, cabling deployed in the field and they don't want to pull all that cabling and replace it with something else. We should also mention that there are these new speed options for base T. This is something that has evolved um, with the demand of uh, wireless access points. And it's been um, it's been an evolution of about two years when the NBASE T alliance was formed, and this is a standard that just was just ratified, I believe, at the end of September. And this is a stepping stone for these Wi-Fi access points uh, to, that enables them to leverage the existing uh, cabling infrastructure without having to make the jump directly to 10 gig. The benefits uh, for us here are the, the the potential of running operating our cameras, the 10 gig base T cameras using these medium speed options, being able to drive up to 100 meters using these uh, 2.5 and 5 gig speeds. So uh, in terms of uh, whether 10 G base T connectivity is readily available on the market, this is, um, this is some of the research that we did in preparation for this, uh, uh, for this presentation. So the ASROC motherboard on the left hand side here, um, we were able to find that at Newegg for under $600 unfortunately much more expensive in Europe. I don't understand why that's the case. Um, somebody's making some money there. But um, the point is that there are other applications for 10G based T. In this case, this is for local area gaming, local area network gaming. So the benefits here are the low latency aspect of 10G based T. If, if you get more bandwidth, things, you know, data is going to get there much faster. So, so the gaming world is starting to pick up on 10G based T, which is quite interesting. The other aspect is uh, is storage. So this is a this is a one port adapter, a 10 gigabit, gigabit Ethernet adapter from uh, Ficus, uh, and and they specialize in uh, consumer and um, commercial storage solutions. So they're leveraging that 10 G based T technology and also offering uh, a single port PCI Express adapter. On the right hand side here, you can see a, a product from IOI Technologies. Which, uh, which is a vendor that is actually here at the show, um, and they've just released this product recently. I, I'm not showing pricing uh, for, for their adapter because they don't have this available on the internet, but I would encourage you to stop by their booth. I think they're just over on the left-hand side here, and ask them about uh, the pricing for these adapters. I know they are very competitive. 
And on the, on the bottom right hand side of your screen, we have a switch. And this is a, uh, also being driven by the, uh, the gaming uh, local area network type of uh, use case. The point that we wanted to make here is that these switches are becoming much more affordable and they are in demand by the consumer marketplace. So just like with gigabit ethernet, 10 gigabit ethernet is starting to see demand from the consumer marketplace. And, and that's really where we will see the cost of connectivity go down. Okay, so without further ado, I'm excited and thrilled to introduce to you the Oryx 10 gigabit ethernet camera from Clear Point Grey. Our key selling features for the Oryx are the flexible deployment using copper CAT 6A cabling. The easy transition we can enable because these cameras can leverage GigiVision, can leverage GeniCam. We are, we are enabling the, the latest, greatest Sony Prejudice sensors. We've always been a, a huge uh, supporter of, of Sony and, and we're very excited about the Prejudice technology as well. We've already deployed this in a number of uh, USB 3 Vision and GigiVision cameras. And finally, we have some um, advanced features inside of the camera to help our customers automate and improve the efficiency of their uh, machine vision application. So here, here are the first three sensors that we will be focused on. We're going to start with a 12 megapixel um, IMX253 sensor from Sony, followed by the IMX255 and the IMX250. And we are targeting Q2 of next year for the launch of the first model. So this isn't just a, just a technology demonstration here. We are actually showing a, a working demo in our booth, and I'll talk to you about that in just a second. So we wanted to put up this slide to show you how much of the bandwidth we are leveraging with these, with these devices. We are showing you here a 12-bit 12 12-bit um, 12 frame rate, which is, uh, which is actually quite essential to leverage the Prejudice uh, imaging performance to get all that dynamic range out of the sensor. And we, we see here that we have surpassed what USB 3 and GIGI would allow. But there's still quite a, there's still quite a bit of room here that, so we can add more devices, higher frame rate devices here and still leverage this 10 gigabit Ethernet interface. Now, I wouldn't be, um, we wouldn't be able to talk about 10 gigabit Ethernet without talking about um, power consumption and heat dissipation is one of the, the, the key challenges with 10 gigabit Ethernet. And so when we, when we started uh, with the design of our Oryx camera, we spent a lot of time focusing on, on this aspect of, of, the, of the design. And what we, what we targeted right off the bat is the, the case temperature performance of our existing cameras. So as you know, we, we have a number of products uh, readily available, including the Blackfly camera, which is, which is uh, both GE Vision and USB 3 Vision. And so we are basically matching the performance of the Blackfly, uh, which has been uh, shipping and, and quite reliable in the field for many, many years. And so we believe that the thermal design that we've implemented here will continue to, to, to provide that kind of performance. In addition to that, we've also designed this product to not rely on any heat sinking or any moving air across the case. And so I, we have an image here on the left-hand side, which is the visible image. You see there's a fan back here, which is nice and, and crisp. Uh, this was, I believe, captured with a rolling shutter cell phone camera. Okay, so, so that fan is actually not moving, for those of you that are familiar with Volvo versus rolling. And you can also see that the camera itself is sitting on some uh, rubber pads, so there's really no heat conduction happening there through, through, through the mounting or anything like that. So, so we've definitely taken a keen focus on making sure that the, the thermal design is solid. The other aspect of 10 gigabit Ethernet that, um, that is uh, often asked about, just like it was with gigabit Ethernet, is CPU consumption. And so what we've done here is a very, very, um, very simple test on a off-the-shelf Intel, Intel card that's readily available today uh, using a Windows 10 uh, i7 CPU. And what we see here is, is that the CPU consumption is, is quite low, at below 1%. We also looked at the kernel time and user time 
required to, to get these, this image into memory in order to identify that there's still a lot of, a lot of duty cycle left over for the image processing application aspect. And that's, that's clearly the concern for anyone that is worried about CPU usage specific to 10 gig. And so we believe that this is a very manageable scenario and, and very useful to anybody that wants to use image processing with the 10 gig camera. So let's look at some, some application, target applications for the Oryx, Oryx product, um, starting with uh, component and solder inspection. Uh, this is where the Sony Prejudice sensors are really going to shine with the high dynamic range performance. Um, compared to the existing 12 megapixel CMOS options that are available today, uh, lots of customers are doing multi-frame averaging in order to enable the same dynamic range. With the Sony Prejudice, you don't have to do that. Also, this, this 10 gigabit, tank gigabit that option would allow um, the component and solder inspection machine providers to enable a mid-tier price option that they can't achieve with the existing high bandwidth interfaces. Another application is web monitoring and troubleshooting. This is common in many manufacturing applications. And, and here we have already a deployment of, of CAT6 uh, or CAT5 cabling. And, and so being able to step up the resolution and frame rates of these cameras without having to replace all that cabling is where uh, Oryx and 10 gig Ethernet is, is, is really useful. And finally, an application that uh, many of you have probably seen on, on your television screens, especially with the Olympics recently, um, the automation of uh, object tracking in many sporting applications where the stadiums are quite large and the cameras have to be deployed at great distances from one another. We can leverage that uh, 10 gigabit, 10 G base T copper interface to enable much higher bandwidth for, for, this, for this use case. Wanted to also include this slide for those of you that are not aware that point gray is now clear. Um, despite that we are now clear, which is uh, very exciting for us, we are still going to focus on machine vision. We are still making uh, visible, uh, visible cameras, visible range cameras. And uh, we are excited about the, the potential future for what our products can leverage uh, as far as the FLIR um, acquisition is concerned. And so finally, um, as I mentioned earlier, we do have a working demo of the Oryx camera in our booth, the 1B42. I can actually see the top of our booth from here, just right there. I do encourage all of you, all at once, to, to go over there and check it out. Uh, we are running a uh, matrox mill, and we're doing some uh, edge detection. And so the point here is to show you that in a, in a real uh, image processing application, the CPU consumption is still manageable, and it is still very applicable to, to applications of today. Thank you very much.